approach angles, departure angles, even breakover angles. Do you know what these terms mean? Do you know what your angles are? Probably not. And honestly, that's okay, because most people don't. In this video, we're going to discuss why that information is completely useless to have and what's actually more important to know before you hit the trail. So let's dive right in. Welcome back to the channel, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are talking about the approach and departure angles of your rig, what they mean, and why that information to have is almost completely useless. First, though, I want to discuss what these terms mean. So first, let's talk about approach angle. What that means is as a vehicle approaches to an object, it translates into the tallest or highest measurement object that you can conquer by getting your tires on first before it hits your bumper or any of your vital components. The second term is departure angle. Well, if the approach angle is as you're heading towards an object, then logically departure angle is after climbing over the object. And that is the tallest object that you know you can clear off your tires again before it smacks your rear bumper. And then finally, we're gonna talk about your breakover angle. Now the breakover angle is basically the measurement from the ground to the lowest point on your frame in the center of the vehicle between the two wheels. So not the actual center of the vehicle, but the center line between the front tire and the rear tire for the highest object that you can clear going over before you high center or get stuck or hung up on the frame in the center of the vehicle. So when it comes to using these terms off-road, approach angle, departure angle, breakover angle, do you know what your actual angles and measurements are? You know what? 10 points to the first person that can put it down in the comments that actually knows exactly what their angles are. But when it comes down to it, knowing those measurements doesn't matter. And here's why. You see, if you're anything like me, you swore back in high school that geometry would never be used again in your life. That is geometry. So why should we start now? We don't need to know these measurements, but here is what you do need to know. If you are traveling off-road and you come across an obstacle like a large boulder, maybe a tree that's fallen down in its path, or a, a ridge that you got to climb up and over. You don't need to know what the angle is, okay? You don't need to get out with a protractor and measure the angle of the obstacle that you're trying to get over so that mathematically it makes sense. Honestly, there's not very many of us that can simply do trigonometry in our heads. What you need to know is, do I think I can conquer that obstacle? So, for example, if you come across a boulder, let's say, yay high, and your front bumper is down here, do you think you have the appropriate approach angle to be able to climb up on that boulder? Probably not. But if you're only hitting a rock, let's say about this high, does it really matter what the angle is? No, because you know that you can clear it. So ultimately, I want you to think about it like this, okay? Regardless of what your final approach or departure angle is based on your lift, tire size, design of your front bumper, I don't care if it's 24 degrees, 9 degrees, 17 degrees, 49 degrees, it doesn't matter. What matters is, can you conquer the obstacle that's in front of you. Now, these terms are something that you may hear thrown about willy-nilly on a trail. Hey, you don't have the approach angle necessary to conquer that obstacle, or hey, your departure angle is going to get you in trouble here, or your breakover angle is not quite tall enough, you're going to end up high centering. At the end of the day, we're using them as terminology. We're not actually talking about the physical measurements. I do not expect you to get underneath your Jeep with a protractor and 
uh, calculator and actually figure out what these angles are. The angles don't matter. What matters is whether or not you feel confident that you can conquer your obstacle. 99% of the traveling that you're going to do off-road is forward. Then naturally, the most important measurement or most important one to keep in mind is going to be the approach angle. Frankly, if you approach the object and you can't climb up it for your front tires, then you already know you're not going to clear it in the center and you're probably not going to clear it in the rear because we travel forward. But again, that doesn't mean you need to know what the angle is. One thing you should know, though, is how you modify the vehicle changes these particular angles. Now, obviously, lifting it or raising the center of the vehicle higher off the ground is going to improve drastically all three of these angles. But that's not the only meal ticket in order to increase those values. Now, here's what I mean. The shape and design of your front bumper can also make a huge difference. Now, in my case, I actually prefer the stubby look. Some people prefer the full width look or the mid width look. I've even seen some people just simply run without a bumper altogether. I don't recommend that. Anyways, by shortening my bumper, I'm actually exposing a lot more of my tire. So even though the ground clearance between the ground and the bottom of my bumper did not change, now changing my angle when approaching that obstacle, instead of head on and coming at it, I can still get my tire on the obstacle without hitting any vital components. And then obviously the size of the tires you choose to run can have a huge impact on approach and departure angle. Now, the reason being is because the center line to your axle is the center line in the middle of your rim and tire. So the larger the tire, the higher that center line gets, the higher that center line gets, then the higher this point, which is the furthest forward point of your tire, gets off the ground, and that equates to even larger obstacles that you can conquer. So tire size, in addition to the lift, in addition to a properly designed front bumper, could really make a hell of a difference when it comes to your approach angle on the front of your vehicle. Your departure angle on the back is pretty much just the reverse and opposite of what we talked about up front. A high clearance bumper, larger tires, a lift helps to increase that angle. Honestly, there seems to be less and less of us that are concerned about smacking our rear bumper than we are about smacking our front bumper. And naturally, simply because of where the rear wheels fall in relation to how far back the cargo area goes, your departure angles tend to be a lot less than your approach angles. But that's okay, because if you made it up and over the obstacle, a little bit of uh, bump and rub in the back is kind of a badge of honor, if you ask me. So although we'll skip the minute details of departure angle, we are going to talk about a breakover angle. Now, a lot of people just assume the higher you make it in the center, the better off you are off-road. Okay, that has some merit to it, but remember, the higher you lift it up off the ground, the higher the center of gravity, the higher the center of gravity, the more tipsy the vehicle becomes and therefore less stable. So there's a balancing act that needs to be done. But when it comes to the breakover angle, this is affected by so many different variables wheelbase being the biggest variable. Now a two-door JK actually has a much better breakover angle than a four-door JK because the wheels are closer together. And remember the breakover angle is the center line between the front and the rear wheels. So a four inch lift on a four-door JK gives me this look, but a four inch lift on a two-door JK would probably almost double the breakover angle because of where the wheels are. But then you've got vehicles like the Gladiator. Now the Gladiator is an even longer 
wheelbase. So even with the same lift and same size tires, the breakover angle is actually a lot smaller. So here's why they call it break over, okay? Your front tire goes over the obstacle. Before your rear tire can hit the same obstacle to climb up over it, you need to clear the center. I've seen more people get hung up because this measurement doesn't match the characteristics of their wheeling style or this measurement doesn't match the characteristics of their vehicle enough for them to be able to accomplish what they're doing. While you're off-road, the terrain can change in an instant, and it can go from hilly to flat to deep holes to ruts to rocks to water crossing to mud to sand to having to navigate around trees off camber around an embankment. It can change rapidly. So when you are using your vehicle off-road and you hear somebody start throwing these terms out, basically what they're telling you is approach is the front end, departure is the rear end, breakover is the center. Do I have the clearance necessary to make it over the obstacle I'm trying to conquer? So folks, the bottom line is the actual geometric measurements of what these angles are, they don't matter. Now, if you are one of those guys that needs to know that information and can do complex mathematical equations in your head, then good for you. But frankly, it's useless information. What you need to know is what these terms are referring to. Like I said, approach is the front, departure is the rear, breakover is the center. Do you have the ground clearance to conquer what you're conquering? So that being said, just take it easy when you're out on the trails. Don't do anything stupid. Don't push yourself beyond your limits, especially if you're convinced that it's beyond your limits. There's no reason to purposely break or destroy your machine Unless, of course, that's what you're into. So in the meantime, folks, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. If you have any questions, then feel free. Put it down in the comments below um, or shoot me an email at yasmarproductions at gmail.com and we can discuss it in a lot further depth. In the meantime, folks, stay safe, happy Jeeping, and we will see you next time.